Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our live health show coming to you from here. Bradford Ikra TV, alhamdulillah. Before the break, we were discussing, you know, the signs and symptoms of attention deficit hyperactive disorder. And I mentioned that it's not just children who have ADHD, even though predominantly it is children. But the issue is, is that these children, they grow up and they grow up with the same symptoms and the same traits. So it goes on to adulthood. Or many a time, the children aren't diagnosed with ADHD as children, and then they grow up into adulthood, and they carry on with the same symptoms, same neurological disorders or behavioral disorders or impairments of the brain, whichever theory you follow. And then they have a hard time working, hard time with work relations, hard time with the social relationships, hard time you know, in studying, Whatever it may be. So I mentioned that I'm going to break it up into two parts, children's symptoms and adult symptoms. So before the break, I was going through the children's symptoms. So let's start. There's a total of nine symptoms in total. Uh, a child with ADHD may exhibit all of these or at least six of these for them to be diagnosed with ADHD. So let's start with the first one, the moment, daydream a lot. A child, a child with ADHD may daydream a lot. He's always daydreaming. In school, the teacher looks at him and he's kind of zoned out, that's ADHD symptom. Number two, they forget or lose things a lot. They forget pens, forget pencils, rulers. You know, teachers tells them something, father tells them something, the mother tells them something and they forget. ADHD, lack of dopamine or <clears throat> uh, lack of the way the brain uses the dopamine. Number three, they squirm and fidget. They don't like to do homework. You know, anything that requires prolonged mental uh, attention like homework or Quran or whatever it may be, reading, they don't like because this is how their uh, symptoms exhibit. It's not their fault. They have ADHD, a bona fide impairment or behavioral issue. And obviously, this can be addressed. Uh, I mentioned before, homeopathic medicine can be eminently, eminently well suited to, ch uh, to children with these uh, symptoms. Number three, and number four, sorry, they talk too much. A teacher will complain that this child, Abdullah or Zainab, is always talking, always talking, always talking, always talking. This is another characteristic of ADHD, attention deficit hyperactive disorder or just ADD, attention deficit disorder. Number five, make careless mistakes or take unnecessary risks. Careless mistakes. They, you know, if you say, the teacher says, or the mother says, the father says that, if you had looked at it carefully, this mistake would not have been made. If you looked at this ayat of Quran properly, you would have read, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ But you didn't read it properly, you didn't look, you know. So, basically, uh, not paying attention properly and making uh, mistakes which should not have been made. And then continuing, so making careless mistakes or taking unnecessary risk, the fifth sign of ADHD. And the sixth one is having a hard time resisting temptation. In, in the children with ADHD cannot resist temptation. This is why many children kind of, and you know, as they get into adolescence, uh, they start doing things which they shouldn't do, like drugs or other risky behavior. Couple this with the fifth uh, sign, which is making careless mistakes or taking unnecessary risks. You know, it can be potentially very, very dangerous. So the sixth one is having a hard time resisting temptation. This is just how the brain, for these children, their brain is wired because of the lack of dopamine, the production of dopamine. Number seven, having trouble taking turns. Children with ADHD don't like having turns. They like to do things their own way. <clears throat> and the eighth one was having difficulty getting along with others. They don't like to get along with others. Again, it's a part of the number seven. They don't like, they don't like taking turns because they want to do everything their own way. But I was saying that the children who have ADHD have these symptoms. Number one, their mind is not ready. اپنے خواب اور خیال کی زندگی کے اندر ان کا وقت گزرتا رہتا ہے ٹیچر بھی یہی کہتی ہے کہ بھائی یہ جو بچہ ہے عبداللہ ہے یا زینب ہے یہ توجہ نہیں دیتے آپ نے دماغی خیالات کے اندر ہی یعنی رہتے ہیں نمبر ٹو 
ان کو بہت آسانی سے چیز گم ہو جاتی ہے ان کی چیزیں پین ہو گئی ہے قلم ہو گئی رولر ہے کپڑے جو کچھ بھی ہو بڑی آسانی کے ساتھ وہ چیز ان سے گم ہو جاتی ہے یہ بھی ایک سمٹم ہے اے ڈی ایچ ڈی کی نمبر تین وہ آرام سکون کے ساتھ نہیں بیٹھ سکتے ہیں یعنی ویسے بچے آرام سکون کے ساتھ نہیں بیٹھتے ہیں لیکن جن کو اے ڈی ایچ ڈی ہوتی ہے تو ان کا یہ جو یعنی یہ بہت زیادہ ہو جاتا ہے ہر وقت وہ کچھ نہ کچھ ان کے لیے کرنا لازمی ہوتا ہے وہ بیٹھ نہیں سکتے ہیں کتاب نہیں پڑھ سکتے ہیں لکھ نہیں سکتے ہیں کچھ نہ کچھ یعنی ان کو حرکت کرنی پڑتی ہے چاہے اپنے جو پاؤں ہیں اس کو ہلاتے ہیں ہاتھوں کو ہلاتے ہیں گردن کو ہلاتے ہیں کچھ نہ کچھ کرنا پڑتا ہے ان کے لیے یہ بھی ایک سمٹم ہے اے ڈی ایچ ڈی کے لیے اگر کسی کے اندر یہ سمٹم ہو تو آپ ان کو پروفیشنلی اسیس کروائیں اور ان کی تخشیص کروائیں نمبر فور باتیں بہت کرنا اے ڈی ایچ ڈی بچوں کے اندر یہ باتیں بہت کرنا بہت ہی بہت ہی ایک اہم سمٹم ہے وہ بچے باتیں بہت کرتے رہتے ہیں اسکول کے اندر بھی وہ چپ نہیں ہو سکتے ٹیچر ان کو پڑھا رہی ہے گھر کے اندر والد صاحب کو ان کو کوئی کہہ رہے ہیں لیکن وہ باتیں اپنی باتیں کرتے جائیں گے کرتے جائیں گے کرتے جائیں گے اور نمبر فائیو کہ ایسے بچے جو ہوتے ہیں جن کو اے ڈی ایچ ڈی کی بہیویرل ایشوز ہوتے ہیں وہ یعنی خیال نہیں کرتے ہیں کام کے اندر یا جو کچھ بھی کام کرتے ہیں اس کے اندر توجہ نہیں دیتے ہیں اور خیال نہیں کرتے ہیں لہٰذا ان کو بہت یعنی واضح واضح اور یعنی ظاہر مسٹیکس ہوتے ہیں غلطیاں ہوتی ہیں اور نمبر چھ یہ بچے جو ہیں وہ یعنی ٹمپٹیشن جو ہوتا ہے نا کہ کوئی کسی کوئی مثال کے طور کوئی چیز انہوں نے دیکھ لی تو فوراً ہی اس کو وہ لینا چاہتے ہیں چاہے خرید کر لیں چاہے ویسے لے لیں وہ اپنے آپ کو اس سے روک نہیں سکتے ہیں ٹمپٹیشن سے اپنے آپ کو وہ روک نہیں پا سکتے ہیں نمبر سات اور لوگوں اور بچوں کے ساتھ یعنی ان کا رویہ اس طرح ہوتا ہے کہ وہ ان کے ساتھ یعنی کہ تعلق ان کے ٹھیک نہیں ہوتے ہیں وہ یہ چاہتے ہیں کہ وہ اپنا کام کریں اور اور بچے اپنا کام کریں اوروں کے ساتھ مل جل کر کام کرنا ان لوگوں کے اندر نہیں پائے جاتا اور نمبر آٹھ ڈیفیکلٹ ٹروبل ٹیکنگ ٹرنڈ کہ اگر مل جل کر کام کرتے ہو نا کہ پہلے آپ یہ کریں گے پھر یہ میں کروں گا ہاں یہ بچے بالکل اس طرح گوارا نہیں کر سکتے تو یہ آٹھ سمٹمس ہیں بچوں کے اندر اے ڈی ایچ ڈی کا سو آئی واز سینگ Now, when you have ADHD, there's three main types, okay, three main presentations. The first one was predominantly inattentive, and number two, predominantly hyperactive and impulsive, and the third one was a combination of both. So now let's go through the symptom, and this can be, can be found in children as well, where they are pre predominantly inattentive. How will they present? First of all, it could be a child, it could be an adult, because children, you know, grow up into adults. And they take the same symptoms with them. Sometimes they've not been diagnosed, and other times they've been diagnosed, but nothing's come from it. So it's hard for the individual to organize or finish a task. Uh, a task. Agar koi admi, yani koi kam jo hai, usko khatam nahi kar pata, ya usko yani organize nahi kar sakta, to ye bhi symptom hai AD, HD ki. Lekin ye inattentive, inattentive yani uh, uh, AD, HD ka ek hissa hai. Number two. They can't pay attention to details. You tell them to do something and they'll make silly mistakes. Again, because of this component of inattentive uh, ADHD. Number three, they can't follow instructions or conversations. You're talking to them and their mind is somewhere else. They're not following your, you know, whatever you're saying. Again, this indicates that they have the inattentive uh, presentation, predominantly inattentive uh, presentation of ADHD. And number four, they're easily distracted and they forget details of their daily routine. They're easily distracted. So if a child or adult has any of these, that means that he, she is presenting with predominantly inattentive uh, you know, ADHD. That's the first type. The second type is where you pre uh, present with predominantly hyperactive impulsive. So look at the words, hyperactive and impulsive. <coughs> How will this kind of exhibit? So what happened with the person who's hyperactive, impulsive, ADHD? I mean, please don't get confused. ADHD manifests in three big ways. The first one was being inattentive. And I mentioned the signs and symptoms of that. Number two, hyperactive and impulsive. And the third, all three. Impulsiveness, hyperactivity, as well as inattentive. I'm going through the second part which is predominantly hyperactive and impulsive. So the person will fidget 
the person who needs this, uh, you know, who uh, can be classed as predominantly hyperactive impulsive ADHD, he, she will fidget and talk a lot. They can't sit still for long at all. Uh, even when they're having food, they'll be, doing, they'll be fidgeting. When they're doing homework, they'll be fidgeting. Hyperactivity, impulsiveness. <clears throat> Small children will run, jump, or climb constantly. Hyperactivity. Okay? And then they'll feel restless and they'll have a lot of trouble with being impulsive. If they see a toy, they want it now. They want you to order that toy now. Impulsive, where action happened before thought. They'll do things and then think afterwards. Even many adults you'll know do this. And inshallah, when I go through them, 10 uh, questions that will show if you have ADHD as an adult. <clears throat> so the person will kind of grab things from other people. He'll speak in a, she will, or he will speak at inappropriate times. They'll be impulsive. They'll interrupt others, etc., etc. They can't wait for the person to stop speaking and they'll speak. Impulsiveness, hyperactive, impulsive. Uh, they may have more accidents. Why? Because again, they're impulsive. Without thinking, they're doing the action. And then the third part is where uh, if a person's kind of presenting both with the symptoms of inattention, inattentiveness, as well as hyperactive and impulsiveness. He's got a combination of all these symptoms. So in the UK, if a child has six or more of these symptoms before the age of 12, they'll diagnose him as hyperactive. In America, it's before the age of 16, if they have six or more, they'll say <clears throat> you are ADHD. And if you're 17 and above, you have to show any five of these symptoms. But basically in the UK, if you have six or more of these symptoms I've just gone through now, you will be classed as ADHD. <clears throat> now sometimes these symptoms can change with adults. When adults have ADHD, they will probably manifest more with restlessness. <coughs> they'll be very, very restless. Or they'll be just, you know, wearing other people out with, uh, <coughs> with the activities. They'll keep doing something, keep doing something. You know, they won't have rest. If you're like this, then the chances are you have ADHD. But let's quickly go through the, uh, and remember I mentioned, a 123% increase in adult ADHD diagnosis is between the year 2007 to 2016 published in the JAMA Open Network. So let's go through the uh, questions for adults. If you, you know, think you have all these in you, then you do have ADHD. Or if you got kind of nine out of 10, then still. So first of all, <clears throat> if you answer yes to all these or most of these questions, chances are you have ADHD. Number one, do you have trouble starting projects? Not the pre-planning, you can plan it, no problem. But starting it, you find it difficult to start a project. You're procrastinating, procrastinating. Bear in mind, a lot of guys will think they have these symptoms, but they won't because these are severe. <clears throat> Anytime, all the time, you can't start that project. If that's you, that's the first symptom of adult ADHD. <clears throat> Number two, do you have poor attention to detail? Do you make lots of tiny mistakes or do you ignore instructions? You're being told the instructions, but for some reason, you can't focus on them. You're making a lot of small, small mistakes, and you can't pay attention to the detail. If yes, that's the second symptom of adult ADHD. Number three, are you easily distracted? You're doing something, someone makes a noise, and you just look, and off you go. You leave your desk, you leave your work, and before you know it, you know, you're doing something else. Always, constantly. Easily distracted, number three. Number four, <clears throat> when you do focus, you can kind of hyper-focus. A lot of people say that a lot of people, these children don't have ADHD because they assume that people with ADHD can't focus. But many a time, ADHD people hyper-focus. They just focus on that work and they're not aware of anything else. Hyper-focus. So do you hyper-focus? Do you just focus on one thing to the detriment of everything else? You're doing one thing, you're not concentrating on eating, sleeping. You're just doing one thing. Another sign of ADHD in adults. Number five, do you have bad time management? You have trouble making deadlines. I mean, you get late every day, but you don't learn from that. You know it takes half an hour to get from your house to your office. Every day you're 10 minutes late, but then every day you say, oh, at the same time. So this is bad time management. You have trouble making deadlines. You think a task takes less time. You do the same task again and again. 
but you don't learn that it takes more time. Another sign of ADHD in adults. Five. Number six, are you disorganized? You can't organize yourself. So you keep saying, oh, right, this is controlled chaos. But really, it's just <coughs> an excuse for disorganization. <coughs> you're not organized. I mean, I mean, crazy not organized. Your whole room's a mess. Your bank details are a mess. Everything is a mess. Highly disorganized people. This is a sign of ADHD. Number seven, do you have issues with emotional control? You know, FEM. FEM and then the two I's and the H. F for problem with focus. E for issues with emotions. M for memory issues. I for inattentiveness. And I for impulsiveness. And then H for hyperactivity. <coughs> so, <clears throat> do you have a hard time with emotional control? You're quick to anger. You're quickly, you get sad. Your emotions are exaggerated. You have poor self-image. If you do consistently, then you are exhibiting a symptom of ADHD and you need to go and see your GP or go to one of these specialist centers where they diagnose you. So number seven was, do you have a hard time with emotional control? <clears throat> are you quick to anger, quick to, to be sad, emotions exaggerated, for self-image, etc., etc., ADHD symptom. Number eight, are you impulsive? Do you want to get the things as soon as you hear about them? You say, see something on TV, straight away you want to buy it. <clears throat> You're talking to somebody, you think of a thought, and straight away you don't want to wait for him to finish or her to finish, you speak. This is a sign of ADHD. Impulsiveness. You remember the three types of ADHD? Predominantly inattentive, number one. Number two, predominantly hyperactive and impulsive. And number three, a combination of both inattentiveness, hyperactivity, and impulsiveness. So here, <coughs> are you impulsive? <coughs> Do you want and need the thing you just thought of immediately? You can't wait for the person to finish speaking when you have to say what you want to say. You want to buy the thing that you just heard of now? If you do, then ADHD. Number nine, are you forgetful? And when I say forgetful, I mean short-term memory. Not long-term memory, short-term. Someone's told you your phone number, you forget. Someone told you instructions, you forget. All the people are doing it around you. You, for some reason, can't do and follow simple instructions because you've forgotten. Someone tells you a direction, here, here, go left, go right. It doesn't sink in. Because your brain is moving around too fast, you're not focusing. And then number 10, do you have trouble shutting off your brain? Your brain like a you know, cascade of ideas. You write something down for your project, and when you go back to it, you know, you're writing another idea, another idea, another idea, another idea. Your brain doesn't shut down. Overactivity of the brain. These are the 10 signs of ADHD in adults. If you have nine or more, or if you have all 10, then you definitely go and need to speak to your GP, and uh, what he will say, or you know, you do your own research, it will make sense to you. Your life will make sense to you. Many people go through this and they have a hard time, you know, making uh, head or tails of how to do. So now, let me quickly mention now, this was a quick overview in the limited time we had today. I just wanted to bring it to your attention that <clears throat> many people have ADHD and their life is a mess. <clears throat> it's not their fault. ADHD is, some people say, you know, <clears throat> it's caused by too much sugar or, you know, bad parenting. You know, it'll, these things will make it worse. But let's quickly go through the causations. What causes this? Hmm. So some people say brain injury will cause ADHD. You, the child had a brain trauma. Number two, or their parents were, <clears throat> or their mother was kind of smoking or drinking, al billah while she was pregnant. Uh, number three, these children had exposure to environmental toxins like lead or asbestos. That can cause ADHD symptoms. Or they had a premature delivery. They were born earlier than the EDD for whatever reason. And number five, low birth weight. These, all these things can cause ADHD symptoms. So you have to understand children are not making these things up. They are suffering from neurological or behavioral issues. Yeah. <coughs> Attention deficit disorder is a behavioral condition of children 
characterized by inattention, impulsiveness, and often, but not always, hyperactivity. Hence, they call it ADD or ADHD. Affects 3% of children, 6 to 9 times more boys than girls. And in half the cases, the symptom manifests before the age of 4. The reason etiology is unknown, but heredity is believed to play a leading role. So, <clears throat> what should you do if you have or your children have ADHD? First of all, go and see a homeopathic physician, number one. Number two, omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids are one of the best and most effective ways of helping children with ADHD. They've done this in prisons with, you know, uh, kind of prisoners who have these symptoms and they've done it with children. So if, there's a whole big book by the name of, uh, it's by, the author is called Dr. Basant Puri and it's about depression but it applies equally to, equally to ADHD. So if your child has issues with uh, dyslexia, uh, with uh, ADHD, then with your doctor's, you know, uh, kind of supervision, or at least, you know, his, uh, you know, his knowledge, you should start your children on omega-3 fatty acids. Aim for six months, but you will be so, so surprised. And if you're an adult, the same thing applies. Plenty of omega-3 fatty acids. <coughs> There's about 30 remedies here. <clears throat> Next week, inshallah, if I, uh, if I don't forget, inshallah, I'm going to go through some of these remedies, and then the week after, or even the next week, if we have time, I'll go through the symptom of dyslexia as well, inshallah. Also, you know, some children uh, benefit by doing a food test, IgG antibody test that tells them uh, what uh, foods they are kind of uh, reacting to. And that helps also with calming them down. Now, <clears throat> somebody called earlier on and they were asking uh, re regarding diabetes. So, what they, <clears throat> the book that I want them to read is called... It's called uh, hmm. It's actually called uh, Reversing Type 2 Diabetes It's by an endocrinologist By the name of Professor Roy Taylor So Reversing Diabetes Reversing Type 2 Diabetes By Professor Roy Taylor Of Newcastle University Get this book, <clears throat> follow his guidelines It guarantees reversing diabetes If you've had it less than 6 years It'll benefit you, irrespective of whether it's 60 years or more, but they guarantee reversal of diabetes if you have had it less than six years. Get this book, and I was saying that all the endocrinologists, they have a consensus on what this Professor Roy Taylor is saying. Jazakallah khair for taking part and listening to today's program. Inshallah, from next week, <coughs> I will look forward to seeing you, inshallah. And until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.